I am doing the life of Jacob Drogue. He was born in Manhattan, Montana on January 5, 1920. His dad was John Drogue and his mom was Alice Drogue. Annie, Fanny, Henry, and Stanley are his siblings. He was born third, right in the middle, in that exact order. Digging potatoes out of his family garden and out of his neighbor's garden were chores that he liked to do or just activities he loved. He also worked in the sugar beet fields during the summer. Garden work was some of the most memorable times he ever had. In Jacob's home life, he was happy to be able to help his family when they needed it the most. Jacob attended a church regularly with his parents in Churchill, Montana. Jacob lived in between Manhattan and Belgrade, Montana for most of his childhood. He attended a ton country school in Belgrade until he was in 8th grade. In order to get to school each day, he had to walk. And he always said he had to walk uphill both days. When Jacob was growing up, Herbert Hoover was the President of the United States. When he finished school, his first job was working in the fields with farmers that lived around him. The work in the fields included picking and planting crops. And then on July 8, 1942, he was drafted into World War II. He was in World War II until September 23, 1944. He left the war before it ended because he was on a ship that was bombed. He was sent to the hospital with terrible burns from the explosion. Jacob was only one of three survivors from the ship. Shortly after he was released from the hospital, he got a letter telling him to go to the White House. He was awarded the Good Conduct Medal and given the Purple Heart Award for his injuries and service. Right after he received his awards, he was interviewed on a live radio broadcast. Here is the interview. First question he was asked, do you find many of the boys in the service to be professing Christians? Jacob's answer was, not as many as we would like to see. It was not until I left a Christian home and a Christian church that I really appreciated them. The next question was, Jake, you are trusting Christ as your savior. At what time in your army experience did your Lord mean the most? Jacob's answer was, I've been in service just about three years, two years overseas. Shortly after entering the military service, I confessed Christ as my savior and joined the church. During the first two years of my service, I believed in Christ and knew he was with me. But I felt his nearness and our dependence upon him more than ever after I was wounded by enemy bombs. During the bombing raid and explosions and the time I was lying, on the, lying in the hospital, the words of an old hymn kept running through my mind. I need thee every hour, most gracious, most tender, voice like thine, Lord. In peace of Lord. I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. How I thank God he was near and answered our prayers. In a time that like that, we learn how empty life is without him. I want to tell you young people that are listening is this. Don't wait until the hour of danger to see your need of Christ. Take him today as your Savior, and he will always be near you. Behold, now in the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. He married his wife, Martha Overweg, on November 9, 1945. Wedding colors were uh, light blue for the women and black for men. When they first married, they lived with Martha's brother until he was able to start a farm and start paying for a house. Their first house was a log cabin in Aurora, Montana. The log cabin still stands today and is owned by his brother Stanley. 
1962, Sanyana hitched with his new tractor while his daughter was driving. While she was driving, she found out how to make the hitch move up and down. When she put the hitch up, he broke his foot. During the injury, he got gangrene and had two toes amputated. In 1968, his life changed forever. He found out he had a brain tumor. This brain tumor was affecting his relationship and his church life. It affected his church life because he felt too sick to ever go to church anymore. He went to doctor, doctors in Mitchell, South Dakota. Then he was moved to Sioux Falls, South Dakota to see a doctor. When they had done as much as possible in both those places and couldn't do any more, they sent him to a veteran's hospital Minneapolis, Minnesota. He was in the Veterans Hospital for eight months. While in the hospital, they removed the tumor, so he spent eight months in the hospital because of his recovery. When Jacob came home, his family was so happy he was able to return to farming. He couldn't do as much though. Jacob was happy to return to his family because they were only able to visit him five or six times while he was in the hospital. Learning from the past is useful for viewing the future. I do not remember this man because I was only one year old when he died on May 7, 2002, of course, to South Dakota. But now I know him, and I have learned about him, and for that I am grateful. I never knew who Jacob was or what he did for a living until now. I wanted to learn more about Jacob, so I chose to do him during this project. I loved learning that he served in World War II and was loyal to his family. Last but not least, Jacob wanted his legacy to be. I want to be remembered as a man who was loyal to his family, country, and his faith.